Welcome to Motherland. I'm Iris. Thanks for joining me today. It's Women's Empowerment Month. I'm really excited about it, of course, because I'm a woman and I want to be empowered and I want to empower others. And today um, I'm interviewing a wonderful, great lady coming out of Lagos, Nigeria. She is the first woman to start an auto care shop um, in Nigeria and, and a very successful auto care shop. She is the owner of Nenis Auto, and her name is Oduwa Agboneni. Welcome to Motherland. I'm so excited to have you here today. So I usually just start by, you know, telling people to introduce themselves. Thank you. Your name, where you're from in the continent and the country where, you, you know, where you're from and the city and state where you're from. So let's start with that. Thank you very much, Aris. So my name is Odua. I'm from Bini City, Edo State in Nigeria, Africa. Very nice. So, so you know, just a quick, quick fact. My grandmother is from Edo State. So I just wanted to put that out there. I'm, oh. I'm part Ishan, just FYI. So. But anyway, yes. Okay, thank you for joining us. So let's let's talk a little about. I was just saying earlier that it's, it's Women Empowerment Month. And I'm really excited to interview you because you're one of those people that is doing something that has not been done before. You are actually a pioneer in a male-driven industry around the world, not just in Nigeria. So you are in the automotive industry. What is Nenis Auto? Okay, thank you very much. Nenis Auto Care is a one-stop automotive maintenance center. We pride ourselves in preventive maintenance because we believe that it's better and it's cheaper for you to have um, a scheduled preventive maintenance than when you don't repair your cars and at the end of the day you are forced to a reactive breakdown of your vehicle. We try as much as possible to encourage people to maintain their cars as a way to We carry out car wash and detailing services. We carry out mechanical repairs, we carry out electrical repairs even carry out customization even the body of a vehicle. We carry out painting and panel beating. So we are a one-stop shop and um, we are a female-friendly automobile garage. We, we love women. We, we pay attention to details. We know that women, they don't really, they don't really like cars. Most of these women, they leave their cars to the male figures around them. So, but we take our time to educate them and enlighten them on automobile maintenance also so that even you as a car owner as long as you can make soup learn how to make soup you can also learn how to carry out some basic maintenance of your car not just step into your car in the morning and zoom off or rather you should know one or two things to check in your car before you set out for the day so that's basically what our, our female clients they, they benefit from us I love it. I love it. I love that you're training women on cars. I love it. it just, I just love it. I, I'm an official, you know, officially and officially an industrial assistant engineer. Um, and I, I noticed that you're a mechanical engineer. So tell me a little bit about that. Like what drove you to study mechanical engineering? Beautiful question. Okay. You know, engineering, it's believed to be a male dominated field. So as much as possible, you don't see women there filled with men. I actually wanted chemical engineering though, and not mechanical. But the question would be, what even inspired me to go for engineering and not the other field? Okay, so I in did. Bini City, you know, way back 90s, so I had an uncle that had a borehole in his house. So then it was a very big deal for you to be able to <laughs> produce yours and there was a day I walked up to my mom, I was like, why is it that whenever there is no water, we all queue up in this man's house. You will see over 100 people. We are all looking for water in the morning. And my mom told me that he's an engineer. I was like, wow. Yeah, so one, he can impact lives. I said, he can give water to everybody in this community. And secondly, he's in money. 
I was like, I think I should, I should definitely go for engineering. That was how I made up my mind. So in, I finished from the University of Benin Demonstration Secondary School. And in my school, you had, uh, we had the opportunity of, if you want to become an engineer, you have, we have a special class for you right from SS1. So you're introduced to technical drawing. It made it easy for me. It made it easy and comfortable for me to be amongst guys. I filled my jam form. I put chemical engineering. My dad picked it and said, what, what is this chemical engineering University of Benin first choice? Um, petroleum engineering University of Ibadan Secondary. So what is this? He said, what's wrong with mechanical engineering? He carried it and he changed it to mechanical engineering. So like myself and my mom, I said, is it my dad that will study this mechanical engineering? Do you know, we had to change it back. My jam slip to date has um, chemical engineering first choice, second choice, petroleum engineering. Lo and behold, I saw my name in mechanical engineering, University of Benin. So, <laughs> yeah, that's how it always is. Fantastic, fantastic. I am so glad. You know, it's funny that you mentioned chemical and petroleum because that was my path too. Well, I wanted to be a doctor, but you know, there was just too much going on there. So in my form, you know, I, I put chemical engineering, petroleum engineering, the same thing. Mm. And a lot of women gear towards that because they say it's softer, which yeah. doesn't really, it's not really softer because, you know, in chemical, you have different areas of specialization. So exactly. it's not, not really true. So I'm glad, I'm happy that, you know, you know, the engineers are more, more women, more power to you. But I have a question about, so I was looking at your profile and then I noticed that you guys do waste management, um, auto waste management. And that's something that I don't see enough of, uh, especially with, the, you know, sustainable development goals now in the environment. So what is your goal with the waste management for auto parts? What, what do you guys do with that? And how do you promote waste management in your company? Um, waste management is an area I'm still trying to strengthen my organization in. The essence is we believe that you have to reduce, reuse, or you recycle. So for the engine oil, the condemned oil, it's being sold to those in the construction industry. They use it for road construction. Then some of our parts, we we'll have to like the tires, they are used to make, um, we have the, the bearings, we can use it to make bearings, we can use it to make shaft rubbers. Like for example, we can even turn on them tires into household furniture, into offices and furniture, and they come out, they come out good and fine. We turn all your filters into flower vases. <laughs> So, <laughs> wow, which, I want to see that. Yes, so <laughs> well, I think I have a picture of that on my Facebook page. So basically, that's just the idea what we can turn. But I think I would want to do more in that direction in, in 2021. Well, that is amazing. That is one area that we're not seeing enough of. And I'm so proud of you. I'm proud to be talking to you because, you know, you are making a difference within the environment we really need that i think people don't understand the importance of really saving the environment and, and you're doing one of those things so you know more power to you thank you for helping the environment i think it's going to be anything we can do to support from this side you know i'll be there you know your groupie you know waving putting banners <laughs> on please <laughs> recycle your parts so that's that's great what exactly would you want to tell like aspiring young female entrepreneurs you know it's not easy it's not easy to get to where you are today and there's a lot of us out there and i think that you know especially with women it's a bit harder there's like a gender gap between women and men in terms of making it in different industries especially in yours engineering um i i personally have been you know looked down upon in many instances as not being technical enough or not being just because i'm always in the midst of so many men and you know the women always get like you know they always look, they're always looked down upon in those settings. And I think we always have to work harder and strive and do more just to prove ourselves. So what would you tell, you know, a female entrepreneur in the technical world trying to make it, you know, has her own business? What are like three things you would tell her to keep doing, you know, so that she can become successful? I would tell her 
So always keep her why. Uh, why, uh, why, why she decided to become an entrepreneur, why she decided to become a technical person. You remember the reason why you chose to be doing what you are doing. It keeps you going, no matter what. Two, continuous learning. Continuous learning and continuous learning. You have to keep on improving on what you know today. Because in the technical space, like you might feel presently, you know, like initially you say, Mechanical engineering being in the automotive, I should just be doing only the mechanical aspects of vehicles. But I've realized it, that many of the cars are tending towards electrical vehicles. So what will I do? Will I just sit down and say I don't want to learn electric vehicles or I don't want to even learn about hybrid? No, I will run out of business. So you just have to keep on learning. And the third one, build a very, very strong network among, around you and ensure that at every point in time, your passion, even if you're not making money, it is your passion that will keep you, that would encourage you, that would inspire you to believe in your business, to believe in your dream and continue to move. Very, Thank very you. well said. I actually had goosebumps at some point when you were saying passion, because for me, I'm a, I'm a passion person and I, and I believe that if you don't follow your heart, you know, you won't succeed. Eventually, if you do stuff that you're not loving, it's not going to work out. I mean, it might work out for a temporary period of time, but then after that, it would just fade. So I definitely agree with two and three are very strong for me. Those two and three points are very strong for me. Last thing I want to do, I always do this with everybody, but I'm a foodie. I like food, so I have big teeth. You can see it's a little bit soft. So tell me a dish that you like coming out of either your part of, you know, Nigeria or somewhere else. <laughs> so when you eat it at night, you're gone, you're knocked out, pass out. <laughs> yeah. No, but I can't eat it at night. So I I as I try to eat it on I take it as lunch on Saturdays. Great, great to know your your favorite food. It was fantastic talking to you. Thank you so much for joining me today on Motherland. Um, again, women, 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 thanks for representing us in the mechanical engineering industry, in the automotive industry, and, you know, teaching and training women, and, you know, as well as helping the environment. You're doing so much. You're a leader in your own right. And thank so, you very um, much. all of us appreciate all of that. And thanks again for joining us on Motherland.